Hey everyone, it is Friday, October 25th. You are listening to the Mo News Podcast. I'm Jill Wagner. This is the place where we bring you just the facts. We read all of the news and read between the lines so you don't have to. As you can tell, it is just me today. Mosh is traveling. I'm going to try to keep it short and sweet, but we do have tons of news. So let's get to the headlines. A chance at freedom for the Menendez brothers. The L.A. district attorney says he wants them resentenced, which could free them from prison for their parents' murders. To the presidential election, we are just a week and a half from Election Day. Kamala Harris brings out the star power with Beyonce set to join her at a Houston rally. And Donald Trump stumps out West what he says about whether or not he is open to pardoning Hunter Biden. To the Middle East, a renewed push for a Gaza ceasefire and hostage deal. Why some officials say a, quote, small deal could be on the table. In business news, a judge blocks a big merger in the luxury fashion industry. And no longer a national laughingstock, Forbes names New York City's LaGuardia the best U.S. airport. In some snack news, goldfish, not just for kids, which is why they are temporarily being renamed Chilean sea bass. I am not kidding. Another story that is not made up, Crocs for dogs. They are real and they sold out in one day. Plus, it is Friday. Cheers to the freaking weekend, what we are watching, reading and eating. Starting with some news about one of the most infamous murder cases in U.S. history, A warning, this does have some graphic language if you want to skip forward a couple of minutes. Los Angeles County DA George Gascon on Thursday said that he will seek resentencing for Lyle and Eric Menendez in their parents' murders. This paves the way for their potential immediate release from prison after spending decades behind bars. The brothers' case will now go before a judge who will make the ultimate decision. Some background if you are not familiar with their case. Joseph, Lyle Menendez, and Eric Menendez shot and killed their parents. Entertainment company executive Jose Menendez and Kitty Menendez in their Beverly Hills home in 1989. At the time, the brothers were 21 and 18 years old. Prosecutors had said that they were motivated by greed, evidenced by a shopping spree that they went on shortly after the murders. But their defense attorneys said that the boys were the victims of horrific sexual abuse at the hands of their father. So the first trial had a hung jury in the second trial, which did not allow for most of the details about the sexual abuse to be heard. A jury convicted them of murder. They were sentenced to life without parole. This case has been in the spotlight recently because of new documentaries, one from Netflix and one from Peacock about the case which also prompted Kim Kardashian to speak out. She said that she thinks that they never got a fair second trial. Some of the Menendez family members have also come out. They say they believe the brothers were raped by their father and think that they should be released from prison. Worth mentioning, the brother of Kitty Menendez, their mom, he has come out through a lawyer to say that he strongly opposes their release. The district attorney says his office has been flooded with phone calls asking for information about the case and for them to take another look. Gascon said defense attorneys also provided evidence that one of the members of the Menudo boy band alleged that he was sexually abused by Jose Menendez. Interestingly, though, Gascon said his own office was really split on the decision. Take a listen. I have to tell you unequivocally that we don't have a universal agreement. Uh, There are people in the office uh, that strongly believe that the Menendez brothers should stay in prison the rest of their life, and they do not believe that they were molested. And there are people in the office that strongly believe that they should be released immediately. But he says that ultimately, after a careful review, he does think that resentencing is appropriate, that the Menendez brothers, who have spent 35 years behind bars, have paid their debt to society. He says they've undergone rehabilitation while in prison, and he thinks that they can safely be released into the community Again, the final decision will be made by a judge. Gascon not ruling out that members of his own staff 
could actually be in court to argue against him and against their release. Gascon, by the way, is up for re-election. Polls show that he is down uh, big time by about 30 percentage points. He said the decision, though, not politically motivated. Speaking of politics, now to the presidential election. We're about a week and a half from Election Day, even though millions of Americans, as Moshe and I have been talking about, have already cast ballots via early voting or mail-in voting. We've also been talking about the campaigns, pulling out all the stops for Kamala Harris. Beyonce is joining the vice president at a rally in Houston today, along with her mother and country music legend Willie Nelson. Harris has used Beyonce's song Freedom as her walk on music at rallies. And if you remember, there were tons of false rumors that Beyonce was going to perform at the Democratic National Convention. That, as we know, never actually happened. But this time it's real. She will be at that rally today in Texas. Bruce Springsteen, Tyler Perry, Eminem, some of the other big names who have been coming out for Harris. We have been asked on the Mo News Instagram account if all these celebrity endorsements actually help. They are seen by the campaigns as a way to generate awareness and interest among audiences who might not be paying attention to politics and to help encourage them to vote. But we asked our audience what they thought. 17% of you guys said that the celebrity endorsements help, 14% said that they hurt, and 68% said they are a non-factor. Of course, our audience is very, of course, our audience is very much engaged with the news. As for Donald Trump, he has been trying to rally his base. He's been bringing out some big conservative names like Tucker Carlson this week at a rally. He traveled out west Thursday night holding rallies in the battleground states of Arizona and Nevada. He did make some news during an interview with conservative radio host Hugh Hewitt. He was asked if he'd consider pardoning Hunter Biden, who was found guilty in June of three felonies in a federal gun trial and pleaded guilty in September to federal tax charges. Trump said that he is actually open to pardoning Hunter Biden if he's reelected. He said, quote, there is no question about it. He, Hunter, has been a bad boy. All you have to do is see the laptop from hell. But he says, I happen to think it is very bad for the country. And as the political headlines just keep on coming, make sure you check out our Instagram page where we're following them all at Mosh, M-O-S-H-E-H. Time now for the speed read. Let's head over to the Middle East from Axios. CIA director Bill Burns is expected to travel to Doha this weekend for talks with his Qatari, Egyptian and Israeli counterparts about a hostage release and ceasefire in Gaza deal. It will be the first meeting between Israel and the deal's mediators after more than two months of deadlock in the negotiations and no significant talks between the parties. But U.S. and Israeli officials say that they think that Hamas leader Yahya Sinwar's death does create an opportunity to resume negotiations for a deal to release the 101 hostages still held by Hamas and also to establish a ceasefire in Gaza. Hamas's chief negotiator, who is Sinwar's deputy, is in Doha, and Qatari and Egyptian mediators are expected to brief him on the talks over the weekend. The State Department says Secretary of State Anthony Blinken met on Thursday in Doha with officials from Qatar to talk about renewed efforts to secure a deal. In a press conference after the meeting, he said negotiators from the U.S., Qatar, Egypt, and Israel will be meeting in coming days to talk about some type of deal. The CIA director, the Qatari prime minister, the director of Israeli's Mossad and the new director of the Egyptian intelligence service are all expected to attend that meeting. That new director of the Egyptian intelligence service and Israel's Shin Bet chief met earlier this week and talked about an idea for what they're describing as a small hostage and ceasefire deal that could potentially jumpstart negotiations on a broader agreement. Axios is reporting that this idea includes a release of a small number of hostages held by Hamas in return for about two weeks of ceasefire in Gaza and increased humanitarian aid. Blinken's hold family members of Israeli American hostages who are being held by Hamas that he thinks that the, quote, small deal is definitely an idea worth exploring. He said, we are looking at different options with our Qatari and Egyptian partners. We don't know if Hamas is ready to engage. I anticipate we'll learn more in the coming days. He said, the fundamental question is, if Hamas is serious, Sinwar was the biggest obstacle. I hope now their minds will be concentrated and that we can get there. 
To some business news from Bloomberg, a judge blocked the planned $8.5 billion acquisition by Tapestry Inc., which is the maker of Coach and Kate Spade handbags, who was looking to buy rival Capri Holdings. A U.S. district judge froze the deal after concluding that it would be anti-competitive. So that gives the U.S. Federal Trade Commission time for its own internal trial over the merger. So that is a process that could take months and ultimately doom the combination. From the Gothamist, New York City's LaGuardia Airport is now considered the, quote, best airport in the country. That is according to a ranking from the Forbes Travel Guide. The head of the Port Authority says this new accolade is proof that LaGuardia is no longer a national laughingstock, but something that our entire region and country can be proud of. LaGuardia previously had a reputation for being one of the worst U.S. travel hubs with Joe Biden once calling it a, quote, third world country. But the airport began undergoing a facelift after officials unveiled a comprehensive plan back in 2015. I have to say, as somebody who lives in New York, LaGuardia is a pleasure now. From CNN, goldfish crackers are synonymous with hungry kids. But the company is betting that a sophisticated name change could expand that audience. The Pepperidge Farm snack brand is tweaking its name for a limited time to Chilean Sea Bass, a more grown-up title. It is part of a strategy to attract adults and to reestablish its relevance amid a broader decline in snacking following a peak in the pandemic. Despite rebranding as a popular seafood menu item, the recipe and appearance of the snack is not changing. Goldfish explained in a press release that the much more adult name is to reinforce that goldfish crackers are not just for kids, pointing to the growth of trends popularized by Gen Z and millennials on TikTok, such as making, quote, girl dinners. But in case you are looking for them, the Chilean sea bass snacks will not be appearing on store shelves. Bags featuring the branding are only being sold online and only for a short period of time. And finally, from USA Today, Crocs has sold out of its new line of boots for pets They were released on Wednesday as part of what the company calls Croctober, and already they are no longer available. Crocs dropped the smaller boots for pets along with matching clogs for their human companions as part of Croc Day on Wednesday, October 23rd. The doggy boots came in green and pink, and they also came in three sizes, and they sold out online in just hours. The boots were selling for 50 bucks. I just looked online and the human clogs, which glow in the dark, are still available in most sizes. And if you don't have a Halloween costume yet, there's actually a a Crocs classic costume, which is just what it sounds like. It's basically a giant croc. And then your head pops out like one of the holes that's on top of the Crocs. Very interesting. Not sure how comfortable it is, but it is kind of cute. All right, it is Friday. Cheers to the freaking weekend. Time for what we are watching, reading, and eating. Mosh has sent me his picks. He says that he will be watching the World Series between the New York Yankees and the LA Dodgers. As for me, I just started watching the show Slow Horses. It's on Apple TV. It is a British spy thriller. It is actually already in its fourth season, but I have not watched it yet. My husband says it's great. I also think that I should probably watch the Menendez documentaries, now that this story is really back in the news. Okay, what are we reading? Mosh says he'll be reading Patriot by Alexei Navalny. He's the Russian anti-opposition leader. He died in a Russian penal colony north of the Arctic Circle. Navalny began writing Patriot shortly after his near-fatal poisoning in 2020. Part of this autobiography was written in prison. As for me, I read two op-eds in the New York Times, one from pollster Nate Silver. The title is, here's what my gut says about the election, but don't trust anyone's gut, even mine. His gut, by the way, says that he thinks Trump is going to win. And then there is an op-ed from James Carville, a longtime Democratic strategist. It's titled, Three Reasons I Am Certain Kamala Harris Will Win, where he basically argues the opposite, that his gut is telling him it is a Harris victory. My gut, this thing is too close to call, and I am certainly not going to make any predictions. I'll be waiting until the results come in. As for what we are eating, Mosh says he's going to be eating lobster rolls in Boston's Sail Loft. And I am on Long Island where Restaurant Week starts on Sunday. So I might be taking advantage of that and trying some new restaurants out here. I'm also realistically 
going to be eating a lot of candy because the Halloween festivities have already started. All right, everyone, that is a wrap for me, and that's a wrap for this week. Thank you for listening to the Mo News Podcast. If you like what you hear, please share this with your friends. It helps us grow. Follow us and subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Review us in the App Store. Wishing everyone a really wonderful weekend. 